Welcome back to MVM. Today I am bringing you a sponsored preview. This one is for the game In Too Deep from Burnt Island Games. Now this game has what I consider a very interesting premise and this draw was one of the reasons that I really wanted to bring you this preview. In this game, you're taking on the role of a syndicate organization that exists kind of outside of any individual government. It's kind of a black book. They have developed this technology that lets them jump into the mind of criminals and kind of monitor their behaviors in order to gain intelligence and thwart their schemes. Now, to do this, you are kind of edging these people into making one decision or the other and kind of pushing them to do some criminal actions in order to maybe help them get deeper into the organization so that you could ultimately bring it down. So there's a lot of gray area to this game because you're actually going to be facing dilemmas all the time. Not only what do you do with these criminals, but also when they're committing crimes, you can choose one route or the other. One of them might give you other rewards, but also might give you dilemma cards. Now, the idea here is that one of you at the table is going to go in too deep. This is the player that has become the most corrupted over the course of the game, and they're going to be facing some interesting decisions as well. So before I get into all that, let me say that this is a Kickstarter prototype, so everything you see here in front of you is prototype components only, uh, though it does mostly resemble what the final is going to look like. And you can see a four-player game set up here in front of me. Here, the core of the game is this city, and you're going to see a bunch of different tokens out on the board. Now, you're building this out randomly, and you're placing these different criminals out randomly as well. There is a little cheat sheet that's going to tell you what all these criminals are, and this player aid also has all your actions and everything broken down on the back. But these criminals are laid out in these different districts. Each district has a action that can be taken, has an item that can be picked up, and sometimes you're going to see blockades. In addition to the criminals, you also have the sentinel, which represents the police. Now, you can't let the police know what you're doing. This is an entirely shadow organization. So the police will still interfere with the criminals and try to stop you from doing job. So that's kind of one of the interesting back and forth of the game as well. In the center, you're going to put tokens of each of the different criminals. Each player in turn is going to be able to take one of these tokens and gain control of that criminal for that turn. And I'll talk about what you'll want to do next. Over here, you're going to see two different boards, the evidence board and the syndicate board. Kind of the core of the game here is to gather these evidence tokens. And you're always going to see four face up to choose from and then a number of face down tokens. This is also the timer for the round. The round is played over three chapters. Each time this pool runs out, you're moving on to the next chapter. At the end of the third chapter, it's the end of the game. Now you're going to want to take these evidence tokens and bring them over here to the syndicate board. If you can contribute evidence up here to the syndicate board, you get to take these cubes, which help you gain intel. Intel is one of the ways you're going to score points at the end of the game. So the more that you complete these objectives, the better you're going to do. Down here, you're going to see a space for the final objective, like the, the big plot. You can try to foil the big plot over the course of all three chapters. So you basically have three chances to gather enough evidence here to stop that final plot from happening. Now here's the key thing. If you are in too deep, if you have a lot of corruption, you actually don't want your team to foil that final objective. You're in so deep that you actually want that final objective to go off. So at a certain point, you're going to have to start working against the other players subtly, which is kind of one of those hooks. Now, everyone else is going to be able to kind of see who has the most corruption. They might kind of know what you're doing because they realize that you're trying to stop them. So there is definitely, uh, while not direct PvP, there is a little bit of that element of working against other players. But just because you're in too deep now doesn't mean another player won't gain more corruption than you. So you have to be very careful. If you tank this plot too hard, then it becomes a race to get the most corruption then maybe and see who becomes in too deep that way. So that's kind of all set off to the side of the, the game board. Each player is also going to get their own little player aid. You're going to have up here what's called your grip. This is the amount of control you have over each criminal. And this is replicated by these discs that are going to slide up here. As this disc gets farther along, you're going to unlock some special powers for the criminals. You're also going to score some extra intel points at the end of the game. In addition, you're going to have a place to hold your evidence tokens and a place to hold your intel. 
and you're going to start the game with one of those evidence tokens and three of that intel. So that all just kind of sits here on your board and you're going to take your grip tokens and place them here. Now like I said, as you're playing the game, you're going to be moving these grip tokens across the board and basically increasing your ability to use these particular criminals. Each turn, you're going to take one of these criminals and place it here in what's called your hook. You can have three criminals hooked at one time, but as soon as you hook your third criminal, you have to draw one of these dilemma cards. Now these dilemma cards have a variety of information on them. Some of this is used for scoring, some of this just straight up adds together and leads to your corruption. So if you ever have three, you're going to have to trigger that. Now, you can also take a criminal from another player. If somebody has already hooked a character you want, you can simply take it off their board and put it on your board, but you have to pay them an intel to do that, which is a victory point. So you have to make those decisions. You can have three, and you can control all those criminals on your turn because the kind of the meat of the game is taking actions with these criminals. And there's a variety of things you can do on your turn. You can move your criminals around this board. You can activate the criminal's power, which again is on this player aid. You can pick up and exchange items. And you can use some of the abilities that are printed down here on the bottom of the board. You're also going to see these yellow heat tokens. If an area has heat tokens, which means the police are watching it, you can't use that ability. However, if you do use the ability of an area, then all of the heat from the other three areas comes there. And then you always have three, two, and one heat kind of in that aspect. So each time you do the action, like I said, you're, get, you're gathering that heat, but you're wanting to do these actions because these are how you're going to gain evidence tokens and try to complete jobs. That's really what you're doing on your turn. There are two types of jobs that you're going to have, and you're going to start with two in your hand. You have side jobs, which just kind of can be completed for rewards kind of outside the main storyline of the game. You also have these numbered jobs, and there are three different acts, basically, to the criminal storyline. As you try to complete these jobs, they're going to actually kind of build up together to form a narrative. And each one of these jobs actually has prerequisites of other jobs and things that have to have been completed before you can complete your job. But each one of these jobs wants you to do something specific. Uh, it's going to tell you on the card what to do, and then it's going to give you two choices, the green choice and the red choice. The green choice is kind of more of the lawful choice, whereas the red is kind of more of the corrupt choice. You're going to be drawing this either way because you're still doing criminal activities. But the more corrupt you become, the more your rewards are, but the more of these dilemma cards you have to draw. And that is how you can kind of start down that slippery slope of just having a ton of these cards. Now, as you play, you're going to be, like I said, gathering evidence tokens and moving it over here to the evidence board. Every time you draw evidence tokens, you have to take from the four available first. So you'll take one from the plank and any extra that you get are going to be random. In addition, up here, you're going to see the boost tokens. You can actually earn these bonus tokens throughout the game, and they're going to increase the abilities of some of your actions. Some of the things that you can do on the board are going to be stronger and better. Now, when it comes time to file evidence, you're looking for three specific types of evidence, and that is listed here. So I want these three different evidence tokens to try to complete the chapter. So I'm going to look at what I have in front of me. When I contribute evidence, I'm going to take these and place them up here. And each time I do that, I get to take one of these contribution cubes. This means I've contributed to completing the chapter. I'm going to get some bonus intel at the end. And you're going to just keep placing these up here. Now, there's no guarantee that this is entire tableau is going to be full because you might end the chapter before you've completed all the contribution cubes. But the goal is to get as many of these completed as possible. Any other evidence tokens that you wish to contribute can simply come down here to that uh, final area. And you're going to have the three spaces over here, one that gives you a bonus token, one that gives you tolerance, which I'll talk about in a minute, and one that gives you extra grip. You can place your tokens there, and it doesn't matter what they are, but over the course of the game, these spaces are going to be filled, and the rest of your evidence tokens that you supply are just going to come face down here in this final area. Now, you're going to continue playing with one play player being the starting player, and then going turn by turn with each player taking actions on the board. And each of those players is going to get to take two actions. So this board is going to shift and change a lot as people grab these items, move around the board, and take the actions. All in the hopes of completing these cards, because at the end of your turn, after you've done your two actions, you're going to get to look at these and see if you meet the requirements to complete one.
Now, when you do complete one of these story cards, it's going to sit over here in this story area. And it's going to tell you, for example, B1 has already been completed. So if you have a requirement on your card that says, I need B1 to be completed, you're going to be able to then complete your next step in this chain. And over time, this is kind of going to build out into a tableau that's going to kind of tell the story of your particular game. And there are a lot of these different cards, so you're not always going to see every bit of story or every bit of crime that can be committed. After that, you're going to get to choose to discard any remaining crime cards you have and then draw back up until you have one of each. In addition, once that's done, you're going to lose all the hooks you have on your criminals. So all these criminals that you use to complete that job are going to go back in the pool and then play is going to continue to the next player. They're going to be able to hook a criminal. You've just lost yours, so if somebody was waiting to grab it from the pool, they'll be able to do that. And like I said, we're going to be doing that until the end of the chapter. Once the chapter is over, we're going to score that individual chapter. If you look over here at the syndicate board, you're going to see if any contribution cubes are remaining here on the board. If any are remaining, then you have failed your mission. Now, there are good and bad outcomes. If you do complete the mission, then each player that contributed is going to get two victory points or intel for every one of those contribution cubes they have. If you fail the mission, but contributed, then you're safe. You don't suffer the bad consequence as long as you have at least one of these cubes. But everybody else is gonna suffer. For example, you'll see the first round, you're gonna lose two grip, the second round, you're gonna lose three grip, and the fourth round, you're actually gonna be losing intel if you didn't contribute. So you are encouraged to contribute, but if you see someone has taken a lot of these contribution cubes, maybe you wanna see it fail because you don't want them to get you know 10 or 15 points from that. So again, you're watching what other players are doing and kind of striking a balance. It's good to kind of cooperate and spread these out equally so that nobody feels that desire to just completely tank it and not contribute at all. So once that's done, you're going to remove uh, all the evidence tokens that were there. Now at this point, the evidence board should be empty because you already triggered the end of the chapter. You're going to refill the plank and then refill the board. And you're going to return all contribution cubes back to the evidence. All of these are going to come back to the bag, and the three that uh, you were looking for that chapter are going to change out. We're going to shuffle all six of the possible evidences together, and we're going to put out three more. So it's possible that you'll end up with the same evidence multiple times. Then we're going to move down to the next chapter. We're going to refill the evidence board. Now once all that's done, you're going to look at all of the dilemma cards that you have in your hand you're going to have to bank half of them, meaning you're putting half of the cards you have away that they can never be discarded from this point. Now, these are going to give you corruption, but some of these are also actually going to give you victory points. And I'll talk about how they're scored at the end of the game, but you're going to take half of them. You're going to put them off to the side somewhere. These are guaranteed to cause corruption for you at the end of the game, and the rest are just going to kind of sit off to the side. And then you're going to start again with chapter two, you're going to play all the way again through chapter two the same way. At the end of chapter two, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to score the syndicate board. You're going to store away half of your dilemmas. You're going to do this again, and you're going to do this again a third time for chapter three. After chapter three, though, you've triggered the end of the game, and you're going to be looking at the final score here. Now, the first thing you're going to do at the end of the game is gain your intel for your grip. Remember how I said you can move your grip up and increase your grip strength over the course of the game, and you're going to score all that intel. So you're going to take all that and bring it over to your intel pile. Now after that, you're going to look at all your dilemma cards and you're going to count up the total amount of corruption. If you have the most corruption, then you are the one who went in too deep. You better hope that you failed uh, to foil that final plot. Now there is a way to reduce your corruption by gaining tolerance tokens. You can collect these during the game and each token reduces your total corruption by negative two. However, if you had the lowest corruption, then you actually get an intel bonus. Five intel for every player. So in a four player game, you're gonna get 15 extra intel just by being the least corrupt. So there's still a bonus to try to have the least amount of corruption. Now, after you've determined everybody's corruption, then you're gonna come over here to the final plot and see whether the criminals succeeded or not. Remember, your goal as agents was to actually stop them from completing their big final plot. So we're gonna see how this breaks down. So by the end of the game, if everyone was contributing, you're gonna have quite a bit of evidence tokens here on the board. You're going to start flipping these over and placing them into groups of like tokens. And remember, like I said, there are five different 
possibilities here. And if you have three of each, then you actually foiled the plot. If you failed to get three of each, then the plot is successful. Now, of course, that's going to change based on the number of players. You're going to need less tokens for the less numbers of player counts. Now, if you succeeded in foiling the plot, then you kind of win the game. Everyone's happy, except for the in too deep player. They're going to look at their total corruption value, and they're going to lose that much intel. So it doesn't make it impossible to win as the in too deep player, because you're getting a lot of victory points throughout the game when you gain these corruption cards because the more corrupt the more reward you generally get so it's tricky it puts you in an interesting position because you've just lost a bunch of intel however if you fail to foil the plot then you don't lose intel at all so you just got all those bonuses throughout the entire game and you didn't actually suffer any penalty here so that is the best possible position for that player now whether or not you succeeded or failed you're going to move on to final scoring now you're going to look at all the evidence that you collected for that final plot and you're going to sort it based on how big the biggest stack is. So for example, my stack of bullets is the biggest, so it's going to slot over here and be worth four points. This uh, clocks are the next biggest, they slot over for three, then I have this stack here for two, and I have this stack here for one. Now these are the evidence tokens that are going to score at the end of the game. You're going to look at all the evidence tokens that you still have on your player board and all of the evidence tokens that you might see on your dilemma cards and you're going to score that multiplier for example every bullet that i have presented on my cards is going to be worth four victory points every clock that i have presented is going to be worth three victory points so you can kind of control this a little bit by contributing more of that evidence to the pile but remember you're scoring what you have left. So if you give all of it to the plot, then you're not gonna have any left to score unless you had some printed here on your dilemma cards. In addition, these dilemma cards are gonna score you points in kind of a set collection uh, style scoring here. You're gonna see printed on these cards, Intel, Wanted Posters, or Sentinel Sigils. Now after you add up all the intel that you got at the end of the game, plus all the intel that you had earned during the game, you're going to add it all together. If you happen to have the most intel, then you are considered the winner. You are the best agent of the syndicate. And there's a little chart in the book that's going to kind of rate your performance by who won the game, whether they were in too deep, whether or not you foiled that final plot or not. It's going to give a little bit of closure to that narrative. Because like I said, that is in too deep. I really like this idea of every player kind of taking control of these criminals and trying to constantly foil each other because there is a lot of decision making you have to do in this game and while this is not a hidden role or deduction game at all there are definitely elements of that as you're trying to figure out who is using what strategy as far as maybe one player is just trying to go in too deep and get a lot of points and foil the in plot so you have to kind of watch for that as well and you have to kind of watch for that each chapter too so guys thank you for watching this preview please comment ask any questions let me know what you think about the game and as always please like subscribe follow us on facebook and check out the kickstarter for in too deep i'll see you guys next time